Hi there, this is Dr. Tracy Zhang, your instructor for Introduction to Biology. Today we're going to go over the scientific method in more detail. I already showed you a brief introductory video that went through some of the steps of the scientific method. And I asked you to think about what you think you would like to explore. Let's explore the scientific method in more detail. Now, as we said, there were several steps of the scientific method. These steps include observation, hypothesis, or asking a question, experiment, and collect your data throughout the experiment, analyze your data, draw conclusions, and then sharing your findings. Now when one observes what is going on in the world about us, a lot of times we have many questions. The scientific method provides a specific set of procedures that scientists follow to learn about the world. So our first step is to observe the world around us. In this picture, we can observe that one plant looks alive and vibrant and the other looks quite dead. So we have to ask a question. Ask yourself, why is the plant dead? That leads us to the next step. The official term for a specific question that was asked for a science experiment is called a hypothesis. Now this is a very defined question. It's not just why is the plant dead. The hypothesis requires a little bit of background research and in some cases some descriptions of scientific method include that as an actual step. And you will find that the scientific method steps vary according to the science field. Chemists have slight variables that are different in their scientific method than biologists, for example. Engineers have a different set of steps, but they're all based on a very specific number of steps that include hypothesis, experiment or test, observe, collecting data, analyzing data, drawing conclusions or results, and then sharing your findings. Background research is very important because you need to find out first, is this a question that's already been answered? Has research been done on this specific question that you're asking? And the question has to be limited so that there is only one variable. A variable is a part of the experiment that can affect the outcome. In order to design an experiment that actually will test a single variable, you need to eliminate any excess variables so that only one factor effect that affects the outcome can be tested at a time. Otherwise, your results aren't going to be as valid as they might be. So the next step from your construction of a hypothesis is to conduct an experiment. Once you have your experiment set up and collected all of the supplies that you need and decided how you're going to collect your data, you actually conduct the experiment and collect data. So in the case of the plant that one is dead and one is not, we're going to test only one variable. Let's test what happens to plants if one is not watered. So we would want to have what's called a control. A control is a part of the experiment that we use to compare to the variable that we are testing. In this case, we will have a plant that gets watered normally as the manufacturer or the a uh, person, a gardener, recommends. So the control is the plant that gets watered normally. Then we might set it up so that you have two other plants, one that you do at a different times of the week or different amounts of water, and the second one is a plant that doesn't get any water. So you would start out with, say, three plants. One is a control that you don't change how things are done, 
two is a plant that gets watered at a different timeline than the control. And three is a plant that gets no water. And then you conduct the experiment for several weeks and discover what happens. So you would want to log in every day or twice a day, possibly take pictures of the plant at that point, and set up a logbook or a science journal to record what happened. What does the plant look like at each time? How much water did you give the control? How much water did you give the variable? And how much water did you give the plant with no water? Then we move right along through the conducting of the experiment in which we have controlled the different variables. Remember, you want to cut it down so that there is only one factor or variable that affects the outcome. Because if you don't do that, you can't make a conclusion that says a plant with no water dies. Once you have your data, you're going to analyze that data. Many science experiments require a number of mathematical analysis in order to analyze the data. We often use various charts, and you can see there's a number of types of charts here. There's a pie chart, bar charts, line graphs, and so on. So we want to analyze the data. We might, for our plants, for example, we might decide to do a chart of a comparison bar chart of the plant with water and the plant with no water to see how their growth developed. And frequently you'll take measurements when you do that. Once you have your data analyzed, you draw conclusions. As you can see here, the water plant or control looks alive and vibrant. It looks very healthy. The plant that you were testing in the experiment has no water and it has died. So obviously you're going to have different measurements for both of these plants. Once you've completed all of those steps and drawn conclusions, and of course remember you're recording all of these things in your lab experiment journal, you're going to want to share your results. Sharing your results, as I mentioned in the previous video, is extremely important to science. An experiment that's valid must be repeatable. If it cannot be repeated, or if a scientist looks at it and decides that there are too many variables affecting the outcome, or that it's not really a valid setup as far as an experiment goes, then they will uh, decide that that was not a good conclusion that was drawn from that. So sharing is important. We can share in a number of ways, as I mentioned before. Uh, many scientists will write papers, and then they may do presentations at conferences. They may set up videos. For our purposes, we're going to be exploring science fair websites. We're going to look at two specific science fair websites. One is sciencebuddies.org, and the second is Google Science Fair. When we look at the Science Buddies website, we're going to first notice that under the steps of the scientific method, they actually have key information. Remember, the scientific method is a way to ask and answer scientific questions by making observations. Ask a question, do your background research, construct a hypothesis, Test your hypothesis by doing an experiment and collect data during your experiment. Then analyze your data, draw a conclusion, and communicate or share your results. As they note here, it's important that your experiment be a fair test. When you have too many variables, instead of just one variable, your results or your conclusions will be suspect. Our next lesson is going to go through some of the science fair things on the different websites, and that will be part of your assignment for this unit, one of your group projects. This is Dr. Tracy Zhang for Introduction to Biology.